Siddhartha Swami Niki Nomine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gurmani Pracharani Nivi Shesha Shuna Vadi Kacha Tudi Shetarine Namo Mahavadatya Krishna Prima Vardatya Krishna Krishna Chaitanya Nivurat Vishnu Maha Namo Brahmanya Devaya Govrimana Pitaacha Jaidita Krishna Govindana Nivurat Vishnu Maha While my Shishira Deshima Sundar are eating, I would like to say a few words why I offer everything that I cook to Krishna. In other words, why I always eat prasadam. Prasadam means mercy and thus when offered this foodstuff, when offered to Krishna, becomes mercy or prasad or not different from Krishna. But somebody might argue, you know, Krishna is the Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of God, and he's never hungry, thirsty or tired, he doesn't need to eat. Yes, of course, Krishna is never hungry. And uh, even though devotees who are on the highest level, like those, like, like Yashodama, for her Krishna is her son, and for her Krishna is always hungry, and that's why she's cooking and offering. But for us sadhakas, in order to awaken our dormant love for Krishna, then we have to, we should cook and offer that to Krishna, because by serving, we awaken our love. And cooking and offering is one of the ways how we serve Krishna. But on the philosophical side, we offer everything to Sri Krishna because he says so in Bhagavad Gita. If we, if you offer uh, to me stuff with uh, love and devotion, I will accept it. This is in the ninth chapter, verse twenty-six, where Krishna says, "Patram pushpam palam toyam yome bhakta prayachati tadaham." Bhakti Upahrita Asnami Prayatat Manaha Asnami means accept. So Krishna says, I will accept. If one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, fruit or water, I will accept. Another reason why we offer food to Krishna is because in this way the food is freed from sinful activities. If we eat stuff, foodstuffs that are not offered to Krishna, we eat sin. And this is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, actually stated in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 3, verse number 13. The devotees of the Lord are released from all kinds of sins because they eat food which is offered first for sacrifice. Others who prepare food for personal sense enjoyment eat only sin. Let me see if I can read the Sanskrit verse. Yagya Shishta Shino Santo Muchyan Tesarva Kil Bishai Bunjate Te Vagram Papa Ye Pachanti Atmakara Karanat. Something like that. <laughs> Sorry. So, these are the reasons why whatever I cook, I offer to Krishna, why I only eat prasadam, and why you should also consider, in case you don't offer your food to Krishna, why. You should maybe do it. So let's now finish the offering and accept prasadam. Okay, my friends, as you can see, I put on sari because it's almost nine o'clock. It's time to put my radishyam to bed. But first, I have to make the ambience dark. I have to switch off a few lights here. My dear friends, since quite some time I have this habit of reading Bhagavad Gita before bedtime, I randomly open Gita and see what's Krishna's message for me. And uh, 
Bhagavad Gita is manual of life. This human form of life is very rare and we should utilize it properly so that we don't miss this chance of going back on back to Krishna in this lifetime. Uh, when we buy a new gadget, we, oh, there is always manual instructions of how this gadget should be used. So similarly, Bhagavad Gita is that manual for our uh, in our life and we should really, really make time to read Bhagavad Gita daily. So let's see what is Krishna saying today. 440. A faithful man who is dedicated to transcendental knowledge and who subdues his senses is eligible to achieve such knowledge and having achieved it, he quickly attains the supreme spiritual peace. Oh my God, just one minute before I said that if we utilize this human form of life in a proper way, we can go back home back to Krishna. This is actually, Krishna is like confirming my words. Amazing. So Krishna, uh, Srila Prabhupada says in the purport, it's very, very short purport, I would like to read it. Such knowledge in Krishna consciousness can be achieved by a faithful person who believes firmly in Krishna. One is called a faithful man who thinks that simply by acting in Krishna consciousness he can attain the highest perfection. This faith is attained by the discharge of devotional service and by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare, which cleanses one's heart from all material dearth. Over and above this, one should control the senses. A person who is faithful to Krishna and who controls the senses can easily attain perfection in the knowledge of Krishna consciousness without delay. Thank you so much, Krishna, for this message for me and for all of you who hear it now. Hare Krishna, have a blessed day, afternoon, morning, wherever you are in the world. And for me, it's Shubharatri. Hare Krishna, see you soon again.